This is the R Light Lead Series here for round two of race six at Talladega, Alabama. The Smash Beer Pull Award would go to Laura Cyrus, driver of car number 42. Cyrus is going to get a nice jump over Marcus Leonard in car number 78, that second car on the inside line. Siju Dejao, that black and purple 37, would qualify on the outside of the first row. Kevin Monroe, that white car, tries to take advantage of Leonard's bad start as well. This is 74-year-old Jeb Klinger making his first start of the season in that number 6 for O&D Racing. Klinger would prove that age is merely a number and ran up front for the first few laps. But Klinger would be thwarted by a brilliant pass on the part of Michael White going into turn 3. White in the 0 would slingshot around the 6 before Tristan Roberts in the 29 could have a go at the lead himself. It was thought that Cody Richards would have a breakout year in 2009 after he won a race in the European Exhibition. However, this year has been nothing but a big struggle for that 53 team. After crashing out at Daytona, Richards had not made a single race until Green Valley 540 just a couple of weeks ago. Remember Taylor Brillen from Round 1 today? The Morris, Illinois native would prove that her performance earlier would be no fluke as she executes a masterful move on Harry Anola and Robert Truex to take the lead. Blake Gruel, driver of car number 46, would experience some mechanical problems, and he lost a lap while getting his car repaired in the pits. But luckily, Gruel wouldn't be too far off the pace, and the leaders would not be catching him for a while. Liz Hebert, the winner at Indianapolis, would lead a lap, and then she would be challenged by the J Motor cars of Hinata Huga and Neji Huga, the 39 and 11, respectively. And if you look behind the Huga cousins, you'll see CJ Dejao and Kevin Monroe coming back towards the front. And then Allie Riggs in the 19 decided it would be nice to lead, with pole sitter Laura Cyrus right behind her. And if you look at that fourth car in line, you'll see that is Kurt Walker in the black and teal number 98. Walker recently won the TM Master Cup Series race at Joliet's, and that's given him an extra burst of motivation. There were rumors flying around the garage area that Walker would retire at the end of the 2009 season, but since his win, Walker has decided to keep going. In the meantime, Allie Riggs would become the first driver of this round to lead two consecutive laps. However, she would be thwarted by Austin Harden in the 88. And then Harden would be thwarted by fellow rookie Marshall Clark in the 95. Brenda Riggs, the mother of Allie and Leslie Riggs, would come to the front, uh, challenging Charlie Waters in the 41 for the lead. Riggs is notorious for her success as a short tracker and will participate in the street stack race of the, of the upcoming All-Star Week. The aforementioned Leslie Riggs, driver of car number 50, would take the lead as well, and then she would move over for her teammate Taylor Brillen. And if you looked behind the 34, you would have seen Jeb Klinger in the 6 making another charge towards the front. Marshall Clark in the 95, who was leading not too long ago, blows his engine coming out of turn 2. However, he pulls onto the apron right away instead of staying on the track and leaking fluids all over the place. Siju Dijau, Ali Riggs, and Kevin Monroe would make it 3 wide for the lead. But, as always, the inside line would prevail and Kevin Monroe would take the lead. Tristan Roberts and Austin Harden right behind him. Andy Pearson, that fourth car and the winner of round one, would shoot to the inside and try to take third from Harden. And then Pearson would take the lead for himself. However, as you're going to see in a moment, the 72 is not nearly as strong as it was the last round. And there goes Ryan Baldwell to take the lead going into turn one. The only caution of this round flew with nine laps to go. In what Arla commentator Earl McDermott called the world's most avo avoidable accident, Robert Truex and CJ Dejal get together coming out of turn four. And then while coming back up onto the track, the two gets together with the 37 once again, dumping him in front of traffic. Michael White, the zero, goes up into the air and almost into the catch fence. Chris Johans, Mario Franchetti, Brenda Riggs, Mar uh, Marcus Leonard, and Bobby Portu were collected in this incident as well. In fact, the 39 almost got through this one. Here we are riding behind Hinata Huga. There, is, there are uh, Truex and Dejao. There is the incident starting. The 39 comes back up in front of traffic, and the 67 smashes into the 39. It's kind of hard to judge this, but... I can't say I blame Brenda Riggs for that. When you are that far back, it's kind of hard to see through all the smoke. There you see a dust cloud up ahead. That was from Taylor Brill in the 34. Let's see how she gets through this one. There you see the contact between the 2 and the 37. The 37 comes back up across the track. Brillen makes a hard left turn onto the apron. How she didn't spin that car out is beyond me. 
She rides through the grass that explains the dust cloud, and she safely merges back in with traffic. This is the helmet cam of Chris Johans, the defending Arla champion. He's just riding along, minding his own business, and there's the 37! That would take Johans completely by surprise. The 64 car, as well as several others, were junk. Robert Truex would be called to the hauler, and penalties are expected. There were three laps to go when the race restarted. Allie Riggs was the leader, Austin Harden and Liz Hebert right behind her. Hebert and Tristan Roberts would then hook up and sneak around the 19 going into turn three with two laps to go. Andy Pearson and Jeb Klinger would get would uh, start working together to try to separate themselves from the rest of the pack. But coming to the white flag, Klinger decides that Andy Pearson has hogged enough of the glory and looks to make a run on the 72, but Laura Cyrus, the 42, is right there going into turn one. Luckily for the six, there is no one behind the 42 at the moment, and Klinger, looking for his first win in 30 years, slips back in line. But Kurt Walker in the 98 shoots to the inside to make it three wide for the lead again. Walker's got a bit of a winless streak of his own. A tough break for Jeb Klinger in the 6, he had a great run going today, but right behind Walker would be Leslie Riggs, who is notorious for stealing the win away on the last lap, and today she would not disappoint. It's going to be a drag race to the line between Walker and Riggs, but Riggs has the upper hand, and Leslie Riggs takes the win at Talladega, her second victory of the season and fourth overall. In a moment, you're going to see the slow number two of Robert Truex. The field almost runs into him on the cooldown lap. The two lost a lot of speed on the restart and never recovered. Kurt Walker, despite not having any help on the outside, finishes second. Kevin Monroe in third. Neji Hugo fourth. Dan Mielke finishes in a very quiet fifth. Kevin Colley, last week's winner in sixth. Jeb Klinger hangs on to finish seventh. Vinny Enzo eighth. Taylor Brillen, first start, first top ten. And then we have Cody Richards in 10th. And now for the top 10 in points, Kevin Munro takes the lead, Kurt Walker in 2nd, Vinny Enzo in 3rd, Leslie Riggs moves up to 4th with her win, Hinata Huga in 5th, Alex Carson continues to fall in the point standing, so does Tristan Roberts, Neji Huga in 8th, Dale Underwood in 9th, and Ali Riggs rounds out the top 10. And on a side note, Liz Hebert has moved up to 11th, taking the Rookie of the Year lead away from CJ DeJao, who is now in 13th. 